Hi, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. Today I'm with Lisa Angeloni. She is the Vice President for Enrollment Management at the College of New Jersey. And no, it is not Princeton, which <laughs> had that name at its founding, but T the College of New Jersey, or more affectionately known as TCNJ, is a public college with just over 7,000 undergraduates, a little fewer than 700 graduate students. I have named this college a public ivy on my website for the past six admission cycles. It's one of the few that I've, I've mentioned in, in that capacity. It is also mentioned in my book, The Good College. And there's many reasons why TCNJ has gotten those lauds in my writing. One is that this is one of the most successful schools when it comes to moving students through a system. And Lisa has been an important part of that since I've started the website. And it is the, it does, it is the fourth best graduation rate on the East Coast among public colleges and universities, only UVA, William & Mary, and the University of North, Ch North Carolina Chapel Hill have had more success. They've also had longer histories. Um, they've had have had more success at graduating class. The TCNJ is a lot closer to say a Villanova, a Lehigh, an Elon, that kind of school, though Lisa might disagree with me there, um, than it is like a Rutgers or a Penn State. And so I'm glad to Lisa to be doing this interview with you. And thank you for agreeing to spend the time with me today. Oh, I enjoy it, Stuart, and and we have known each other for a very long time. Um, although we we go we go a couple years perhaps without speaking, but um, it's a pleasure. Well, that's never been on purpose. No, I know, I know. <laughs> we, we, we but but we're going to do an update about TCNJ um, in print, and our conversation is part of that update. Yes. Because we, we've both have learned a lot over the years, um, you obviously about your school and the, and the schools that students consider. And I've learned a lot of the same things, but not as someone who works for a college. So that's right. why I wanted to talk to you. Um, Lisa, for, for, the, for those who are less familiar with TCNJ, especially those who don't come from New Jersey, what makes the school unique versus the schools that your students have typically considered? Right. And again, thank you, Stuart. This is my 26th year at the College of New Jersey, and boy, has the admissions landscape changed, right, in 26 years. Um, the College of New Jersey is a very, very unique institution in the landscape, in particular public institutions, right, um, but also some private schools as well who we compete. And the uniqueness for a public institution is the size of the school. And as you mentioned, we're um, a little under 7,000 undergraduate students at TCNJ. And it is a very selective institution. Um, although we are very cognizant of where the students are coming from and what kind of opportunities they had prior coming to TCNJ. A really unique feature of TCNJ is our care in bringing students in and making sure that it's the right fit student for TCNJ and getting them through the pipeline to graduation and consistently analyzing students coming in, where they're getting hung up and how can we get them to graduation in four years. We think about this all the time, enrollment management, which I manage, that is our sole primary responsibility to bring students in, find where they might getting, be getting hung up to make sure that they're retaining at the college and graduating in four years. These are bachelor's degrees. They should take students four years to complete. And if you haven't heard me say this before, it's my soapbox that families need to ask the questions about retention and graduation rates at institutions because it tells you a lot about that institution, how it's running, how students like it, um, are they preparing students appropriately? And graduation rates um, is a hallmark number as to how the institution is performing internally. So TCNJ is unique in that as a public school, especially. 
that we are looking at that. And no long, not only are we number four on the East Coast, but amongst public institutions nationally, TCNJ ranks as the sixth highest graduation rate. That's that's tremendous. You you brought you you raise a couple of points. One thing is that a school like TCNJ that's not, you know, fifty thousand undergrads, yeah, and not two thousand. How do you help students who might not be decided on a major? Right, really good point. And the College of New Jersey does do something special again, and that is because we're always thinking about retaining and graduation. So a number of really strong students are good at a lot of things and they don't know what they want to major in. At the College of New Jersey, we do have a couple options. A student may know that they're super interested in sciences, but not sure where in the sciences. So in that case, they can come to the College of New Jersey as an open option science student, where they are placed in the School of Science. They are given a faculty advisor and mentoring within that school. They take a first year seminar that discusses sciences and what kind of major might be most appropriate for them with their interests, then they move into a science major. Same thing holds true for all the other areas. Humanities and social sciences, a student may not even know what majors are in humanities and social sciences. So they can come in as an open option in social science major. Same with engineering. They don't, might not know their computer engineering or electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. And the college also just started about three years ago, a truly undeclared student. So this is for the student who really doesn't know that they want sciences, engineering, social sciences. And what we've set up there is a very intrusive advising mechanism. So the students who are undeclared have a personal advisor within our Center for Student Success. And they too take special seminars to help them think about what they're good at and what they want to pursue. Um, retention rates nationally are pretty high for students coming in as undeclared students. Um, and the College of New Jersey has done a really good job with that cohort in trying to guide them into the appropriate places. We do not leave students alone. And that is the other question <laughs> that parents should ask colleges. Well, how is my undeclared student being advised? Because now, oftentimes, unfortunately, they're kind of leftover students. And well, 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 does not do that. Also, what I'm thinking is at a very big school, and I, I went to Rutgers for college, I confess. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you, to go to the business school, you have to be directly admitted from high school. Mm -hmm. um, the same happens often for engineering as mm -hmm. well, nursing. Can someone be undeclared? undeclared? Let's say I'm thinking um, being an econ or political science major versus going to starting in business or I'm not sure if I want to be a nurse or an engineer, but I know I have to take chemistry, uh, my or and biology, my you know, for to make that decision. Can that happen, or are there still things you still have to be a direct admit? We're okay. frozen again for a minute. Stuart. Okay, we're back now. We're back. We're now. back. Yeah, at the College of New Jersey. Um, the only major where you you really need to be a major as you're entering is the school of nursing that's the, and that's because of the clinicals and the uh, Clinical, assignments exactly and the size of the applicant pool is okay. so large um that we want to direct admit those students into the program now anyone and this holds true of any university in the country anyone who's interested in engineering probably should start in the School of Engineering because it's much easier to move out of engineering than it is to I get in. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the same, quite frankly, holds true for people who think they might want to be teachers because in the state of New Jersey, it, 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 there's, it's so prescribed. Yeah. Um, you could get into teaching later on and still graduate in four years, but it's easier to begin your first year as an ed education major. What what else has TCN John done TCNJ done to achieve the successes it has in retention and graduation? 
what other things have you not touched on that you'd like to touch on? Yeah, I, I mentioned it briefly, but at the college, when students are admitted into our school, we do analyze the students who are coming in and who may indeed be best served through our Center for Student Success. And we do reach out to those students as they enter and not because they're not good students. We just think that they might um, be served best by a cohort kind of model within those. To give you an example, first generation students are excellent and we admit many first gen students academically, they are, are, are wonderful, but we do have a cohort that we build in that first gen students can kind of be with another first gen student and think, and we help them think about the college experience a little bit differently. Um, we do that. And the other thing we do is we get our students involved in actively engaged research pretty early. And a lot of colleges say this, Stuart, and you know that, but at TCNJ, we do put our money where our mouth is. And we have a MUSE program, which is a mentored undergraduate um, research program, which is held in the summer. And every major at the College of New Jersey can do a summer research project. And what we're always trying to do is keep the students connected to the College of New Jersey in any way we can. So how can we connect the students? We pay the students to do that so that they're actively engaged and they're not missing out on summer uh, money by working. Um, but we want students to be actively engaged in the campus, know their faculty members and graduate in four years. Our classes are very small too, and you know, and you know this, I mean, we, we typically range anywhere from 18 to 25 students in the classroom, and that is our average class size. As students progress, they typically get smaller. There are some 50 seat classes, but they're very rare. It's probably under 10% of our total class. Um, so like an intro psychology or intro biology, they won't be in maybe the big 50, Maybe. Um, and some of them, the, the sciences typically aren't because our labs are a little bit smaller, our lab spaces. So we kind of try to keep those a little bit smaller. If we do have a 50 person science course, we break them up into two cohorts of 25 so that their labs are small. Has there ever been pressure? You've been, you mentioned you've been there 26 years, even though what you're 29 as of uh, today. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Has there been pressure on, on the college administration to ever change direction anyway, like try to get the enrollment to 8,000 students or add graduate degrees or do, because I've a lot of schools like Villanova recent, you know, fairly recently, when you open a U.S. News rankings book, as a lot of families do, one, they used to be a regional university. Um, they didn't grant many graduate degrees, even though they have a law school, um, but now they're a research university. Right. Has there ever been pressure on TCNJ to change the direction or have you just, this is, you're sticking to what you do best? Well, I think that every institution right now is, they'd be foolish not to, I, I will say as a caveat, but every institution is looking at who they are, where they want to be in the next five to 10 years. And one of the reasons, of course, is because of the shift in the demographics. So institutions are really looking at who do they serve? Um, how big do they want their institutions to be? And how do you bring additional revenue into the institution if, in fact, you're not growing the undergraduate cohort? The College of New Jersey just completed a new strategic plan. Um, we are on a mission, and that mission is to maintain the College of New Jersey as a competitive public undergraduate institution. In order to do that, we need to bring in revenue other places. Um, and so our, our goal is not to grow to 8,000. Our goal is always to stay around the 7,000, maybe 7,500 students, but around the 7,000 area. But we are thinking of other things like how do we extend our four plus one programs? So the students that come to the College of New Jersey, many of them go on to graduate school. So how can we build in a graduate or a master's program for these students? That is the discussion right now. How do we grow four plus one programs? 
Um, we have a new one in public policy. So students mm -hmm. enter TCNJ can graduate in five years with the bachelor's and master's program. Um, so we are thinking of that. And what does the student need? Accounting is another one because you need those extra credits to be certified for accountancy. So how can we extend the student's stay at the College of New Jersey and they would receive a master's degree at the college? Do you, do you have an, within the population, like let's say a liberal arts population that if they stayed another year, they could get like an MAT, a master of arts in teaching or- yeah. So those, those are the things we're thinking about. We have a five-year program in speech and hearing already. Um, as I said, we are thinking about many of the five-year programs. And the other thing I wondered about was post -backs because you've had a BSMD and there's a nursing school and you may have someone. I got my degree in biology and now I realize I want to be, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Now I want to be a physician's assistant or I want to be a nurse. Right. And, you know, if they if there was a post back option, you know, for these kids. We do. We have and we have quite a few of those in the School of Nursing. Okay. Right. So students can come back and get post backs in those areas. But we're thinking about students who maybe want a an engineering more studies in the engineering area. Um, that was something I was thinking, too, like chemistry. I have I, I've taken all the chemistry, all the physics. I've taken probably all the math to earn a master's in chemical engineering. I, I don't think, I don't know if you offer that or I've, or I've had biology, biochemistry right. or bioengineering. And then also mm -hmm. they could go for a master's degree in that. And you're funny you mentioned that because that is one we're looking at is the chemistry. So four ones in chemistry, TCNJ has, has one of the strongest, believe it or not, most, the largest undergraduate chemistry programs. Um, I for a school it. our size, I, I believe it. Given the healthcare community, products community, and the hospital right. community in this area, um, one of the things I had when I've been on campus, um, and I, I, whether I've been at the bookstore getting something, getting a book or something to drink, or eating at the Panera, I meet a lot of kids who are pre med, mm -hmm. and 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 some have been, already been admitted at the medical school. Some are in your BSMD. Some have been admitted to another medical school or another dental school. Um, are there things that stand out in pre-med advising that you would tell someone? You would tell someone at an open house that they might not yeah. see if they go over to UDEL or they go for the Rutgers. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that up. And you again, the science is our strength and a hallmark of the College of New Jersey. We have incredible science facilities at TCNJ, and we have traditionally enrolled some of our highest caliber students in the area of the sciences, whether that be biochemistry, physics, mathematics, computer sciences. Um, we have a very strong pre-med advising program at TCNJ. We do talk uh, about it a lot with the students. And as you know, we have a seven year med program in conjunction with Rutgers. So that initially brings a lot of interest. And that interest comes from all over the country because typically students who are looking for seven year meds Google in seven-year med programs and, and find all the seven-year right. med. TCNJ sends the most students through that seven-year med program of any public school in New Jersey to Rutgers to complete. The college also just signed an agreement um, for a program with Thomas Jefferson University. So students um, will have the option to go to Thomas Jefferson as well. For an MD? Um, for an MD? Or that's for right, for an MD. Really? Mm -hmm. And we've just signed also with Thomas Jefferson. They, they've they come to us because they know what strengths we have in the students. So we've just signed a doctorate in physical therapy with Thomas Jefferson, a doctorate in pharmaceutical pharmacy. Um, and these, the physical therapy program is admission into the College of New Jersey and you will be admitted, if admissible, to the physical therapy program at the same time. Wow. And and do they conduct their own interviews just like TCNJ? Last year, last year was the first year, Stu, and we had more people than we thought <laughs> they would have when matriculate. Many, many applicants. Um, 10 students enrolled in the first cohort, um, which was more than we thought would. Um, they did interview last year. Um, it was a Zoom interview at for Thomas Jefferson, and it was an application at the same time. Um, so students are really happy about that. Pharmacy is another one that we're really excited to be able to offer our students. 
This is very interesting. Now, you you said you've been there 26 years. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the time you've been in the VP of Enrollment Management mm -hmm. position, um, how, what, did, what would you say the, the changes have been in the student body for academics and yeah. for other things that normally are markers of a successful class? Yeah. I mean, I think that our students typically are strong and the College of New Jersey, I think that people know, it's a really good alternative to a private institution for very strong students. Um, so we typically get a, a really good applicant pool of students who come to TCNJ. Um, the students that we enroll typically are, you know, motivated. They've done a good job in the high school that they're in. Um, what we're seeing, and I think all institutions are seeing, COVID really played havoc on the students. And I feel bad for students. They lost out on a couple years of learning in high school. So colleges are now, uh, faculty are now trying to adjust classes um, to better meet the needs of the students where they are coming in. So our student profile looks the same as it has always looked pretty much, but the students aren't performing the way they used to perform. And we think it could be COVID. And I think other institutions would say that. Um, and there's also such an uptick in anxiety issues um, for our students. We have an incredible mental health advising area but colleges and universities cannot keep up with the volume of students who need support um, with mental health. And that is something that universities are really thinking about right now. Um, how do we handle this? Do you have your own staff handle it? You know, the college's own staff? Handle? We have a large mental health staff. It has grown considerably over the last five years. Um, and, it, and it's nonstop appointments from students. During the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, before vaccines were available, the campus, no students could come to campus to take classes Correct. and mingle and socialize. Did the college use the opportunity to renovate facilities, upgrade them while they were empty? Not during COVID, no. Okay. We, we were not updating at that point. Um, the College of New Jersey is a is a really beautiful campus. Um, it's it's pretty. What we're doing a lot of right now is underground renovations that we needed to do. So some of it is dug up, putting in new pipes, all the things that you know aren't kind of sexy, but we have to do it. <laughs> so it's a lot of underground pipes that are going in. Um, and of course, interior wise, my whole Center for Student Success is being renovated this semester. So all new offices. Um, and again, that's to handle the volume of students who are going in for extra help, tutoring, um, advisement. Um, I watched we've also, a I watched we've a also re the, renovated the, um, the recreation center at the institution where the swimming pool is and weight rooms and I, I I watched a clip yesterday, a brief clip yesterday of the of students who lived in the freshman hall. Students made the clip, the college did. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the the walls in the freshman halls, Travers and Wolf, the towers, they're painted. Students paint their own things. Is that still going to be a practice um you know going forward because i think those halls were re were renovated recently well we did some work in tw um the discussion right now is how big our campus will be for residential life going forward right now um the college of new jersey has one of the highest <laughs> residential percentages for a public institution um kind of unheard of about 94 percent of our first years live at tcnj 94% of the sophomores live at the College of New Jersey. As we move forward, we're thinking about, okay, well, how many students in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years will want to live at the campus? Travers and Wolf is an old facility. We um, have done a lot of renovations over the last two years to, to make it look um, better for the students. 
Um, it, it's in discussion about what we're going to do with it in the next two to three years. Um, we are going to let them continue to paint. Those that's that is a tradition. There are murals in there that are twenty years old. I so, I, I have never because I have not seen that. Now I only live like ten minutes from the campus. I have not seen that at any other college. Yeah. There are murals, I think, going back 20 years or more of each class puts up a different mural. And it's really cool. And it, the, we were in there not too long ago. And I guess 2020 or 2019 in March, when we were leaving the campus for COVID, half of that class's more mural was done. Oh. Um, and we decided that we were going to leave it like that because that just marks a moment in time. That that was like what it was like the time the campus was like frozen in time when there were no people around. It was, but it, but I I I saw okay. Well, they could take advantage of some opportunities if you know you can keep people apart to to fix things. I also noticed people would graduate like when they couldn't do a graduation ceremony. Kids came in their caps and gowns with their parents or their friends, and they took pictures. pictures in front of yeah. the lion and in front of the fountain and all this stuff. It was it, it was like it was something. Well, it, it was fascinating, but I hope you we all never see it again. I hope we all kids graduate with their class and they graduate in a ceremony and they get to, you know, to show off in a ceremony. And that's what we all do this for. It is. And we the college did a really good job, I will say, with that. There was only one year that first year that we did not have a ceremony. Um, the last two years we did have ceremonies. We had the first, um, I guess, 2021, we had about 12 ceremonies so that we could, um, so that we could have everybody walk across the stage. Um, and so we did do ceremonies. We know the importance of ceremonies uh, for the students and their parents, and we made sure to do that. Um, TCNJ reset the out-of-state tuition and fees mm -hmm. um was is, was there a, was that part of is that part of uh, your strategy the strategy at the, the college going forward to try to bring people from outside new jersey well i think we have a lot of in yeah we had a lot of interest in students coming um we get a lot of applicants from pennsylvania new york connecticut massachusetts and believe it or not, California is our third largest feeder of applications. Um, and what they were telling us is for a public institution, we were too highly priced. And um, we decided to do a reset rather than falsely just giving people scholarships to bring it down, because that is a strategy schools use, is that they'll charge 50,000, but give you a scholarship for 30,000. And we, we didn't wanna do that. Um, so we did reset the tuition um, we brought it down just above a New Jersey resident. And then for academically gifted students, um, they can still earn a merit award, which will bring them down to the price of a New Jersey student. Yeah, it was interesting that when I saw the rates, it was like, God, a person from Pennsylvania, they could end up paying less than they would to go to Penn State. Right. If they... So we're, we're, we're excited about that. We think it's fair. Um, you know, they pay a tiny bit more than our New Jersey residents, but we do think that's fair. And again, if you're academically gifted, there are some merit scholarships for students and need. What does what the high school age population in New Jersey look like at this time going forward at the, you know, from now to let's say the next five years? What does it look like in, when you're making these decisions? The demographics, did you say? Story? Yeah, the demographic. The demographic. The demographics are still declining in New Jersey. And I, I think new reports are showing that it's going to be extended longer than we originally thought. Um, and do you think the student find the students are more prepared for college over the time you've been there or they could use more preparation in high school? Well, that's that's a tough one, right? And as I said, this COVID period has been real challenging because I think that um, students would be served better if you know they got a little bit more work in high school prior to entering they lost time and you know it's not their fault they lost time and 
the colleges like the College of New Jersey who care an awful lot about retention and graduation are constantly, again, thinking about how do we help these students make up for the deficit, which we know they're gonna have, no matter how strong a student they are. If you didn't get lessons in calculus, you don't know those lessons in calculus. And the kids tell us, the kids that are at PCNJ, they'll tell us I got an A, but I didn't do anything in the classroom when I was in high school. So we're trying to, to make up for that while they're coming in. So right now it's hard to answer that because we, we're we seeing a deficit because of COVID and writing, um, writing has been a challenge for us. They lost two years of learning how to write. Um, so how are we going to handle that? How are we handling it? Um, we did um, do some shifts to our college writing program and um, more students are going into our college writing 101 to get them up to the level that they need to be. And, and in finding faculty, you're not Rutgers, right. you know, where, where people are earning a PhD, you know, expecting to do research and have either a lab or have time to do research. What do you need to find in a faculty member? If you're looking for new faculty, what do you need to find? What we to need to find is we, the mission. Yeah, we've found them. I mean, we we call them teacher scholars at the college, and I think other colleges use that as well. But the TCNJ faculty member is a teacher and a scholar. They're teachers first, and they care deeply about the undergraduate experience. Um, but they also have to do scholarly work. I mean, they are part, you know, they have their PhDs, they're interested in their research areas. They take sabbaticals to continue to learn. They do research with our students during the summer. Um, but they are the type of faculty who really enjoy sitting in front of a group of 20 students and having these one-on-one -on -one discussions with students. And for students who come to visit TCNJ and they tell me where they're looking at, and it's the College of New Jersey and Rutgers and Penn State and University of Maryland, I, I, I will say to them, these are completely different types of institutions and people love Penn State, um, but it is not the College of New Jersey and Penn State experience is very, very different. You are gonna have a class with 200 students in it, no doubt, and maybe more. You have to know that you are committed enough to that class <laughs> that you're gonna go, that you're gonna do the papers, you don't mind that the faculty member doesn't know who you are. On the flip side, if you come to TCNJ, and I tell students this all the time in my open house presentations, your faculty member is going to know if you're not in the class. Your faculty member might also reach out to you in an email and say, you've missed two courses. Are you okay? Um, so that's the difference. Um, and do you have parents who, or st prospective students who say, well, I'm looking at Rochester, I'm looking at William and Mary, I'm looking at a Case Western, a Lehigh, and they're not big in, in undergrad mm -hmm. population. They're about the same size, you know, as, as TCNJ for undergrads. Do you ever run into them and they're thinking, yeah, okay, you have about as many kids as they do, mm -hmm. but why should I choose TCNJ over the, over that? Oh, gosh, <laughs> That's, we get that question every day, right? Yeah, um, because our crossovers do look at that. They do. They are looking at a William and Mary um, to a lesser extent. I mean, they're looking at Bucknell's and Villanova's and and these kind of similar type of schools, but private. And there is a chart that I share with them um, and the retention and graduation rates and the cost. And they are extremely good schools. They are. Um, but they will, you know, they will cost you between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand dollars for four years. Um, you know, you will get some financial aid, and you may take out some loans, and perhaps your parents can pay for that, and that's wonderful. What the college is offering you is that same experience at at more than half the cost of that. Um, with oftentimes better statistics, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> and it, last question: sure. you're you're go, you're you have a Lions Day coming up next week, and you have others coming up in the spring. 
And some of those students who attend, they're going to be your incoming freshman class next. They're going to be part of your incoming freshman class mm -hmm. next year. What will they see? What will they see in, within four years that they will that is not available to them, to them today? Um, I think that they will see an increasing amount of four plus one programs. So if they want to complete their their master's degree, they will be able to do that. Um, we also just signed an agreement with the law school at Villanova that um, if you meet certain standards um, after your third year at TCNJ, you can go to Villanova tuition free um, for law school. Wow. And again, Villanova knows what kind of students we bring in as an undergrad, and they want our students. They want them to help bring the Villanova Law School's rankings up, right? So um, we just signed that with Villanova, and we're ex exceedingly excited, and students are excited about that. So you'll see that certainly within four years. We've already put it out on our application. Um, you'll see some new motion on residence life. Um, either TCNJ building new housing or a third party building new housing around the College of New Jersey. Um, so those are a few things. I mean, there's going to be renovations in buildings, um, but I think that the focus really will be to continue to bring in strong students, continue to retain them and graduate them at high, high levels and offering them the opportunity to graduate um, with master's degrees in five years. Lisa, that's a perfect ending. And, and thank you for doing this with me today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.